Hello, my name is Pat with YankeeMold.com and I want, need, desire a vise to help me weld. And here it is. Now this is based on a design that was first done by uh, Jason at Fireball Tool on YouTube, or at least the first place I ran across it. And it's based off of it, but it's a little bit smaller than his. And I naturally wanted to make one of my own. So I went in and worked with Inventor a little bit and sketched this one up. My plans are available at my website, which is yankeemold.com, right here. And the first things I want to do is talk with you about this vise. First thing you have to do is get these tubes to fit together nicely. They absolutely must fit and slide together properly. And what I mean by properly is they have to fit like these two. They have to slide together without re resistance and they have to fit fairly tight so that there's not a lot of slop in them. In order to get this to work like this, you're probably going to have to cut this weld out of this larger tube. To do this, I used this piece of coal rolled with a cutter put into it and a tapped hole here to pull it through with a piece of 5 8 11 rod. Now it is very, very important, and I cannot make this too, and emphasize this too much, is that you have to make these two tubes fit together nicely to begin with. If they don't work well now, they never will work. You cannot improve things, you can only make it worse. As you weld, you will undoubtedly pull things around and make things a lot worse. You cannot make anything better. All you can do is make this worse. So first thing you have to do is buy just these two tubes and try to fit them up nicely like these two do. If you can't do that... Now, the first part of this is to weld together these pieces here. This is the first nut which was modified and it's turned a little bit to fit into this tube. I think that this will probably be about as easy as you can do it and it fits in here and sets against that shoulder and sets right up there nice and snug and then it needs about a sixteenth of an inch to weld. Now the nut is alloy and the tube is just carbon steel so you should hook these together with like a 308 stainless steel rod. It then sets into this piece which is the rear piece and it sets in here just like that and what you would do now is weld this and that will all be mild steel so it can be welded with a common mild steel rod. When you're done this all has to fit together nice and square. It has to be really true and square to the face so that when it's bolted up in here it fits up tight and square and nice and this will be in the center. To do this you want to use the, the threaded Acme's rod which has a 5 8 11 hole, or excuse me, 5 8 18 hole tapped into 5 16 18 hole tapped into the back of it. And uh, you want to screw it into the nut just a little bit here, which I'm about ready to do, about an inch, a lot to do it. And then once you have that done, then you can use the screw in the back through this washer that you will have made. To hold it centered in here and to keep everything lovely. Now this washer is only about ten thousandths on a side clearance and you want to keep it tight to the tube for now because as you run along with it it will keep things centered and you can always turn it down a little bit if you need to. Now this is just a piece that I have made up over the years it's just a chunk big washer and a bolt that goes into the end and we'll snug it up and we'll have it all really nice. Now one other thing that I discovered as I was working with this is you want to have the flats of the nut oriented. That this has to be centered back here because the nut is only like I said about ten thousandths on a side clearance. This is all machined square in here to hold. And there's about a sixteenth of an inch gap here as well as chamfer to fill up with rod. 
Now this nut is some unknown alloy steel from McMaster, whereas this DOM tubing is some unknown alloy steel from DOM tubing. Probably like a 1018 and a 4130. So I'm going to hook it together with stainless steel. I'm going to use 308 stainless steel rod in here. Now experience has taught me that you can hook almost any two pieces of steel together with 308 stainless and that's again what I'm going to use. Now number two weld will be back here where this is welded on and this is just cold rolled onto cold rolled so we'll be using just standard rod back here. The tube that holds the nut in here. Now this nut, the way that it, if you follow my design, the first way it is, is it's a little tight in here. And as we go here, we'll have to move these to be such that this long edge or the narrow way line up with a flat here. Now is that to be perfect? Absolutely not. Not even close, but just don't have the points lined up with a weld. Or you'll have to cut the weld out of the small one too or grind these points down. Also, another good way to screw these up is to not clean things properly. And you, if you don't, you'll end up with a weld kind of like this one here where it uh, burned a lot of sulfur out from the oil around it and it'll discolor and make a mess out of things like this one has. Not that I would ever make a mistake, but you shouldn't either. Okay, and the number next on the list with these is that as you're welding this, this is alloy steel here, and then this tube here is probably coal rolled. To hook the two dissimilar steels together, I use 308 stainless rod out here where we hooked the weld to the uh, alloy nut onto this and then here it's cold rolled onto cold rolled and so it's just standard rod on this end. And this completes video one. I would like to thank everyone for watching and ask you to please like and subscribe to this video because it really helps new YouTubers. And thank you very much. This is Pat. Goodbye. We'll see you again soon.